Pakistanis fired on the Indian Army ambush party in Gulpur area of Poonch in Jammu. Five Army soldiers have been killed in that. Remember, we got you that breaking news at the top of the hour. And now it's been confirmed that five Indian soldiers died in that firing. In fact, intelligence sources say that Lashkar Tayaba and Jaish e Mohammed terrorists were involved in this operation. The army has confirmed the action by Pakistani troops but has declined to comment at the moment any further on this incident uh, apart from now confirming the casualty figure. Shiv Arur, our deputy editor, is now joining us with more details. Shiv, that's a huge casualty because we have seen firings like these and attempts at infiltration but uh, we don't see to have in the recent past suffered this sort of casualty. That's right, Ma. This is an absolutely uh, enormous, uh, enormous blow as far as uh, operations are concerned. Uh, this was uh, an area domination patrol, which, as you know, uh, are very common all along the line of control. And this was an area domination patrol uh, under the 93 Brigade that was uh, deployed there for overnight uh, uh, patrolling uh, in just, just just due north of the Chakandabag area, which, as you know, is a is a trade route between, uh, you know, between the two sides across the line of control. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this, this uh, unit was actually came under uh, ambush fire. It was completely unexpected. Uh, it was a targeted attack, uh, you know, looking, uh, looking directly at causing uh, casualties in this area. And uh, 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 we cannot reveal at this time how many people, how many soldiers were part of that area domination patrol because we've been requested not to Maha, but uh, we can confirm and we're confirming this first here on airlines today that five Indian Army Javans of this unit uh, uh, tragically, uh, you know, uh, were martyred in this particular operation. It was only an area domination patrol. Remember, uh, their duty at this time was to check infiltration, suspicious movements uh, near the line of control Maha. Also to uh, challenge anybody who looks suspicious and basically to keep the peace, uh, you know, along this extremely sensitive border at a time when infiltrations are on an upswing. There have been several uh, instances of the army challenging, uh, you know, uh, infiltrators in the past few weeks. Uh, and therefore, the vigil has been upped already along the line of control. Uh, this particular uh, incident happened in the Chakanda, just north of the Chakandabag area uh, on Poonch, which is a trade route, as you know. Uh, what we understand is this, this, this happened around uh, 2 a.m. today, uh, so very early in the morning before before sunrise. Uh, this was a uh, 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 this was an area domination patrol that was uh, that had a certain uh, area of responsibility, which was a hilly area. Okay. It was a forested area in Chakandabag, and uh, this uh, but, but also it had a metal road because it was a trade route. And this particular unit was uh, was was conducting a patrol when it came when it suddenly came under small arms fire and uh, sustained five casualties. So the army is uh, completely shocked. Uh, a protest is obviously going to be lodged. This is definitely going to become a big diplomatic issue at this Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Huge uh, setback there to the army. Five casualties over there. Shift stay on with us. Editor Strategic Affairs Gaurav Savant is also now joining us with more details. Gaurav, uh, this perhaps was a bid to infiltrate into India. Do we have any details about whether any militants were able to cross over to India after five casualties on the Indian side? Uh, what we are being told uh, that the Indian troops are ambushed by a bad action team uh, of the Pakistan uh, army or terrorists uh, that is still being ascertained uh, and uh, they crossed over uh, to our side of the line of control and then uh, ambushed uh, an Indian army patrol and as she was just telling us it was just in the adjoining sector in Mainder where in January uh, where the Pakistanis had once again uh, infiltrated onto the Indian side and killed an Indian soldier, beheaded another one and went back. Uh, this is that same sector which at one point of time was actually called the highway of infiltration, the Punch, Mainder, Rajori areas. And uh, in this incident, the army is still trying to get all the details about how this, this incident took place. Uh, very, very sketchy details so far, Maha. Shiv, this sector looks particularly vulnerable. What are the security forces? Uh, uh, what is the strategy really in this area? Uh, it's uh, it, uh, like you know, like Gaurav said, uh, Maha. This is this is virtually a highway as far as infiltration is concerned. It's extremely sensitive. The fact is that uh, the number of infiltrations, uh, uh, infiltration attempts per month uh, in this particular area have been consolidated by Pakistan in conjunction uh, with the terror groups that it sponsors and trains and funds. 
uh, and therefore the number of uh, actual provocations in terms of ceasefire violations to divert attention and actually facilitate infiltration has uh, seen a very sharp spike at this time. Remember, the summer months are the uh, are the most optimal time for infiltration. Uh, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, resources need to be replenished in the Kashmir Valley. Uh, the, there is already a need for more equipment, more men, more materials. And therefore, uh, the Pakistan is already under pressure. The ISI is under pressure to push all of these people in. And, and there are three or four hot spots along the uh, line of control. Uh, one of them is is is, uh, is the North Kashmir. In North Kashmir, it's the Kopwara and Wara area. And in 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 this area, it's it's near the Poonch sector. Remember, from February till now, the number of provocations, uh, not just in terms of free fire violations, but in terms of active infiltration has been really, really big in the in the Poonch Rajori sector, where you've seen uh, virtually about All 11 right. to 12 different mm -hmm. operations in just the last uh, three to four weeks. So that's right. why this one is an extremely important one. Five Javans killed. They're still to a certain whether this fire, firing came from terrorists or from the Pakistan Army Maha. Shiv, uh, do stay on with us. M.M. Kajuria, former DGP Jammu Kashmir, is also on the phone line with us. Mr. Kajuria, as uh, Shiv, our deputy editor, was pointing out there that there has been a spate of infiltration attempts uh, over the last couple of months. How do you read the situation? This infiltration attempt, we've also seen India lose five of its uh, Javans. You see, the Pakistan uh, ISI have lost a number of people uh, hosted in their launching pads. And uh, they are very keen to push them into the valley. And the rest of uh, the part of the move, which is also as a interested, with a view to upgrade and update uh, the terrorist activities there. Because after the uh, the new government came in to win. It looks uh, the Pakistan Army and Pakistan ISI want to put them with a fair to company. And that's why there's a lot more pressure now than it was earlier. As far as full sector is concerned, it has become a more favorite route because of the opening of the Mughal Road. And it makes it possible for them to hide in the uh, the kind of uh, jungle which are close by, there have been, um, in which area there has been a lot of uh, uh, confrontation earlier, people have come, stayed in there and gone back. And from there, proceed on to the valley. Um, in Jammu region, uh, the other two are the Samba sector um, and uh, the Araspura sector. So this is a game plan uh, which is not sporadic or uh, of a local oriented okay. so part of the law is part of the larger strategy mm -hmm. to to destabilize uh, the system here uh, with the Amanwal Yatra almost at the end they're not they're going to be more and more pressured to create problems in the Kashmir and for that we have to be prepared. Mr. Kajuria, how do you think the Indian government should be reacting to these repeated attempts at infiltration? You see Indian government has to react on two fronts. One is, of course, at the military front, and uh, their, their, the reaction, the action and reaction both have been so far, uh, by and large, in city. But in Pulse sector, they probably need to do a little more of, um, shall we say, the intelligence hunting and to be prepared for their mischief more and more in the days to come. The other is the diplomatic which unfortunately, even after the civil agreement, when it was conceded that uh, a particular area is under our control, a particular area is under their control, the Pakistan government is responsible for what happens on their side. And we have been, in my opinion, negligent in not uh, pursuing the diplomatic channels as vigorously, as strongly as we should have done. This needs to be done now. Mr. Kajuria, many thanks for speaking with headlines today. Let's get in more details from Deputy Editor Shiv Arur. Shiv, any confirmation on what terror groups could be involved in this? Uh, uh, still being ascertained by the army at this time, uh, Maha, we understand that, uh, uh, in fact, the information that we're just getting right now, and I just got an, a text message from my source in Jammu, uh, is that uh, the Pakistan army may have actually crossed the LOC. Whoever, uh, whoever was responsible for this ambush, actually crossed the LOC and entered Indian territory. Now, it is still to be ascertained whether 
uh, these were terrorists or Pakistan army regulars or a combination of both. Uh, all all of these three possibilities, uh, you know, is, is a possibility because um, uh, in the past as well, we've seen hybrid formations, uh, you know, c comprising both Pakistan army soldiers as well as terrorists, uh, you know, who they're providing support fire to to aid infiltration actually cross the LOC during the beheading uh, in February, as Gaurav was pointing out earlier. Uh, it was a it was a similar operation where Pakistan army soldiers had crossed the uh, had crossed the line of control uh, and conducted that operation. So as of now, uh, you know other other soldiers and uh, and men from that unit which was ambushed, uh, you know, are currently providing you know providing more information to uh, you know to army officers and other personnel to try and ascertain precisely what happened uh, to create an operational report about what really happened. Uh, because uh, this is like you said, this is this is a monumental loss. Five army troops in an ambush uh, at a time when operations aren't really on. Uh, this is an extremely dense area. It's a highway for infiltration. Uh, so the, the actual vigil on the line of control, especially in the Poonch sector, is, is, is at an all-time high. The Krishna Ghati, Minghar sectors, and all of Poonch really, uh, you know, has become a hotbed as far as infiltration is concerned. And despite the vigil uh, being placed there, you know, across the border, uh, you know, along the line of control in the several posts, that the Indian Army maintains their maha, uh, mm. the, 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 the frequency and the regularity and the sort of diligence with which Pakistan is looking to actually, uh, you know, push through, uh, push through terrorists in this area right. and to uh, violate the ceasefire is absolutely shocking. So uh, uh, the, the unified command will have to review the situation to see whether new measures are required. But right now, uh, like we just told us, uh, Omar Abdullah, the Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir, has just tweeted about it as well, confirming what we've put out first here on his lines today. Five Javans killed, an absolute loss for the army. Retired, Gen Retired Major General Sheru Thapyal is also joining us. Uh, sir, repeated attempts at infiltration and this time five Indian Javans have lost their life. How would you assess the situation presently in uh, the Jammu sector? Uh, I have a feeling that uh, this is a signal being sent by the Pakistan army to their own leadership. You know, whenever they, Nawaz Sharif just spoke that uh, we need to improve relations and uh, do a defense expenditure cut and all that. I think they are giving a signal to their own uh, leadership that, you know, no matter what you say as far as the relations with India are concerned and these things, we are hold the working hand, you know. That is my feeling. Uh, it could have happened in any sector. But, uh, sir, do you think this is uh, the time now to take up this matter forcefully with Pakistan, these repeated ceasefire violations? Yeah, we should do that, although it's not going to help much, unless they are paid back in the same coin, which unfortunately we are not doing, despite to recall when the thing that happened in the inter sector, the army chief had said that he has told his subordinate commanders that they must take action immediately. Which uh, I don't think is happening because this is third or the fourth incident of this kind. So unless we pay back Pakistanis in the same coin, kill their people and don't care a damn as to what they say and you know, let them go to UN or wherever they wish to. But we need to be proactive in this. We are, I think, highly reactive and that is why we are suffering. Major General... Afsar Karim is also now joining us uh, for his perspective on this situation. India has having suffered a huge loss there. Five Javans uh, uh, have uh, died in that uh, breach of ceasefire by Pakistan, firing from the other end, infiltration bid as well. Sir, as far as you're concerned, how do you see now India proceeding from here on? You see, it's a very serious incident which was deliberately planned by Pakistan. Otherwise, so many casualties outside of the border would have not happened. <coughs> so, therefore, we have to think what action or reaction is required firstly on the line of control, secondly on the political level. Because Pakistan, on the one hand, talking about uh, establishing peace, on the other hand, they are indulging in this. Therefore, obviously, the Pakistan army is want to escalate the situation and scuttle the peace prospects. So, we have to take both these angles into view and come to a deliberate and well-planned action required on the LOC, not necessarily on the same place. Where else? Because Pakistan should not go unpunished. I mean, I'm talking about Pakistan army. Major General Kareem, do you also see this particular area where this ambush has happened as particularly vulnerable? 
No, this, this is vulnerable. There's always incidents and fire keeps on taking place in these areas. But it will not happen. The accidental firing or spontaneous from some reason is different. But deliberate action is a planned action which is planned at a high level, not planned which is on the lower level. So that is a most serious uh, uh, nature and it has to be tackled at that level. Major General Afsar, Afsar Kareem and uh, Major General Sheru Thapriyal do stay on with us. Let me quickly get in a word from our Deputy Editor Shivaru before I proceed with our guests over there. Shiv, uh, has the other side suffered any casualties? Uh, no information about that just yet, uh, uh, Maha, because uh, like I said, this was not an exchange of uh, And uh, in fact, to answer your question, there's some uh, fresh information that's just coming that I wanted to break to our viewers. Uh, so getting word from, uh, from, from our sources uh, in, in, in Jammu that uh, the, the, the attackers, the ambush actually happened on the Indian side, which means it was... Uh, the, 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 the Pakistan army soldiers and terrorists or a combination of the two crossed the LOC, they came into the Indian side across the line of control and then, uh, you know, mounted this ambush on the Indian army area domination patrol is the information uh, that we're getting, which would basically make it very similar to what happened in February during, uh, you know, the, the operation where, where our soldiers were mutilated by that uh, party that came across the line of control. Uh, now, uh, as far as casualties on their side, no information about that just yet because remember, this was not just a ceasefire violation. This was actually men crossing the line of control to conduct a very targeted and specific ambush of this Indian Army uh, area domination patrol. Uh, we understand that the survivors uh, of this ambush uh, uh, from this particular unit, they're currently, uh, you know, providing information to actually determine the composition of that ambush party that attacked them at about two o'clock this morning, just north of Chakandabad in Poonch. Uh, and uh, we will be in a position to get more information about the precise chain of events that led up to this ambush. Uh, clearly, this area domination patrol was under watch for some days, uh, and that's uh, and that is when this targeted uh, strike actually happened. But we can confirm now to our viewers first here on LN today, uh, Maha, that this was an operation that happened on the Indian side. So therefore, it very clearly involved men from the POK side crossing over the LOC, coming into India, and then ambushing this area domination patrol. Lieutenant General Raj Kadian is also with us now. Sir, how do you think India should be reacting to this situation? Uh, I have not actually watched the news, but I have just heard it from your channel. It's a very sad development, apart from the fact that the soldiers who died, their families deserve our support and sympathy. This is in line with the uh, anticipation. In fact, I wrote an article recently where I had said, after our convoy was ambushed and we lost eight men, that this is not going to be the last of all. The Pakistanis have raised mixed outfits of the militants and their soldiers to operate along the LFC. Obviously, they want to keep the escalation going. This proves two points. Firstly, that in Pakistan, despite the recent elections and a, a representative government have come into power, army still rules the rules. They are not under the control of the civil control. Secondly, the army has no interest in improving relations. Every time India makes a gesture of uh, extending a hand of friendship, we have these war actions. So these are to be read and I, I still feel that this is not going to be the last event. They will they have raised these special units. They were the ones who did the beheading of two of our soldiers in January. The same elements would have been doing this. Indian patrols, I know it for certain, never cross the LOC. There is no motivation. It is the other side that comes aside, across the LFC, does these ambushes, create casualties, keeps the tension alive. For whatever that their army would know why they are doing it. Obviously, they have no interest in improving the indo pak relations because then the army standing in Pakistan will go down. They, they raise their trails to keep the tension alive. That's my view. All right, let me get in Major General Sheru Thaplial once again, sir. If you just heard Shiv, he said that uh, this incident happened after the army or whatever the composition of that party was that crossed over to the Indian side. It clearly looks like a deliberate attempt. How would you react to that? Yeah, he's right. It is a deliberate attempt. Otherwise, why should they be crossing over to our side? 
lay an ambush obviously they were watching these in patrols moving up and down and their timings etc and the area in which they moving perhaps this may have been ahead of the um, you know the fence like it was in main the sector it, it, it seems like a exact replica but unless we get more details but the aim is clear so jal kadia rightly said pakistan army is not interested in uh, peace with india otherwise their own uh, you know why should the pakistani have such a huge army makes no sense Shiv, let me come back to you. Shiv, is the army confirming anything as to whether over the past few days or weeks they did notice anything amiss in that sector? Uh, nothing amiss, uh, you know. But uh, but uh, you know, as uh, as any of the generals uh, who we're on on the phone line with right now, Maha will will confirm to you. Uh, things are never normal in this sector at any point of time. Things are constantly amiss in this area because uh, you know because of, uh, simply by the very nature of what happens here literally on a daily basis uh, you know uh, uh, the guard can never actually be let down pakistan is constantly uh, you know constantly revising its strategies like general taplia just pointed out uh, you know it's an eyeball to eyeball situation where uh, troops on both sides are, are looking at every single move being made across the line of control now the fact is uh uh why on the indian side it's indian soldiers only looking at the other side uh, on the on the pok side you've got the pakistan army regulars you've got lashkar e taiba terrorists you've got other terrorists uh, you know groups are functioning in conjunction almost indistinguishable from the pakistan army itself uh, there are hybrid groups there are there are, there, are, there are uh you know diversionary ceasefire violations to allow infiltration from other sectors like what happened in february uh, between poonch and rajouri uh, so the fact is that uh, at any given point of time the definition of normal in the area is tense so uh, the the fact is the, the the army has been dealing with this in as diligent a manner as possible uh, you know since the very beginning but the simple fact is pakistan like general kadian pointed out uh, you know uh, it, it is it is in it is pakistan uh, it's it pakistan army is mandated to keep tensions alive in this particular sector and several other sectors on the line of control because it's it's its primary uh, intention is to keep is it keep terrorism alive in the kashmir valley and it cannot actually do that unless it uh, replenishes resources by pushing in infiltrators keeping the tension alive on the line of control and basically keeping the fire burning on an issue that uh, you know that uh, that could easily fizzle out if it doesn't keep the tension and violence alive and that's why the audacity the brazenness of the attacks have also increased this year uh, maha the fact is you've seen the beheading of jawans you've seen two occasions on which pakistani army regulars have crossed the line of control this would be the third this year alone what has actually happened making this perhaps one of the bra- most brazen first eight months of any year we've seen perhaps in the last decade maha lieutenant general kadian i'll come to you now is it becoming increasingly difficult to distinguish between pakistani army regulars and terror group operatives uh, there at the loc now yes uh, it will never be possible they wear the same kind of uniform carry the same weapons operate from the same area but they are mixed groups of uh, regulars and uh, the militants they have been doing it since january january ambush was also a mixed group so this this kind of tension will continue our army of course is alert and will continue to remain alert but the country needs to take note that we should not uh, fall into that trap of just keep extending our hand of friendship while all this is happening on the border and uh, the pakistani army has obviously no interest in the relation being normalized the kashmir separatist leaders had sent a clear signal that unless you keep the tension alive this movement in kashmir will die down it was dying down because of our uh, normal democratic process and the normal development activities that were taking place in jnk so that it's all a mix up of their their army trying to continue to keep the flame alive in kashmir the civilian government in pakistan are not able to control the army the army having clear intention of not normalizing the relation so this is a complicated situation which is carrying on and i'm sure this kind of incident will carry on army has to just bear with it and keep the issue alive and of course i'm sure the army will retaliate to the extent that they should in the area or elsewhere shift coming back to you can you quickly take our viewers through the latest developments and the latest information that's coming forth to you 
Uh, yes, uh, Maha, this was uh, this uh, as in, this is this incident happened at uh, 2 a.m. to get an air domination patrol. Uh, you know, which are very common uh, uh, along the line of patrol was on duty just north of the Chakandabag area of Post. Just Shiv, let me hold you there for a bit. Sanjay Raut of the Shiv Sena is reacting to that incident. Let's cut across to him first. Now, with the Bohoga, now our Kushoga, or a to Puri Maharashtri Jantaki Manga. और विदर्भ की जनता भी अलग विदर्भ के मांग के साथ नहीं है वो हमारे साथ है यूनाइटेड महाराष्ट्र और जो नेता है किसी भी पार्टी का मैं नाम नहीं लेना चाहता हूं तो all right, uh, Sanjay Raut was uh, reacting to another issue. Of course, we will go back to him as and when we can get that exact reaction of his Shiv, coming back to you, you were telling us uh, what exactly happened. Take us through that. Yes, yes, Maha. At uh, 2 a.m. today, this area domination patrol uh, of the Indian Army was uh, was uh, was on on duty, was on operation. It was an area domination patrol of a uh, of a small unit of soldiers, small contingent of soldiers. Uh, and at about 2 a.m., they were apparently ambushed. Uh, and uh, the exact details of how this ambush actually played out uh, are still to come in. In, in the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes, we'll have a much clearer picture of precisely how the ambush took place. Uh, but we can confirm, I'm, I'm getting this from two sources uh, in the Northern Command, that this was an operation that was conducted on the Indian side. The ambush happened on the Indian side. Now, whether they were only Pakistan Army regulars or Pakistan Army regulars and terrorists is, 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 a, is a matter of confirmation, which we also have an idea of uh, perhaps towards the middle of today. Uh, but uh, this was an ambush in which five Indian Army soldiers uh, from this particular uh, unit, they have come to one regiment. Uh, and we won't name that regiment uh, until we've got more information from the Indian Army. Uh, uh, were fatally wounded. They were they were killed in this particular attack. Tragically, the others survived. There were some injuries. We understand. Uh, and uh, as we speak, uh, an investigation is being conducted, obviously by Northern, Northern Command, to figure out precisely what happened. Uh, this is an extremely serious issue, Ma, because not only uh, has it involved five casualties, but quite apart from that, uh, it was a ceasefire violation. Also, it was a violation of uh, of territory as far as the line of control uh, your agreement is concerned, which means that the Pakistan regulars and terrorists have crossed the border and conducted this ambush operation. It's a massive setback, but it's it's it's, it's certainly in line with the increasing sort of level of violence that Pakistan has tried to see possible in the Kashmir Valley. Because remember, the last two to three years, as you uh, as you have also been reporting, Maha, uh, you know, has been relatively peaceful. There, have been, uh, there has been a certain degree of peace that has returned to Kashmir Valley, which the Indian government, the Omar Abdullah government, has tried to, uh, you know, has tried to consolidate uh, and tried to build on. But the fact is, Pakistan is well aware of that, and they need to constantly provoke, constantly up the level of violence, to, uh, you know, to try and get things back on the boil. And remember, we've also revealed recently uh, Maha, how the Nawaz Sharif government uh, had had sent out instructions about you know friendship with India, and just a week later we also reported exclusively here on headlines today how it was actually a devious plan to bring the Kashmir issue back on the front burner. Which means the only way to do that is to you know create tensions in the Kashmir Valley, and the only way to create tensions in the Kashmir Valley are by you know uh, you know sending in more terrorists, sending in more missiles. Because at the end of the day, if resources cannot be replenished, then Pakistan will not have a handle on the situation as far as Kashmir is concerned. And therefore, the killing of a five army Jawan today is directly uh, in conjunction with that policy of keeping things burning and alive in the Kashmir Valley. The army, uh, the army is still to react officially, but we've been get been able to get that official information from there about the investigation that is being conducted right now. This is going to blow up into a big diplomatic issue, Ma. Major General Sheru Thaplial, I'm coming back to you now. Should India have sensed major trouble coming, looking at the increasing number of infiltration attempts? Yes, uh, I'm sure the Indian Army is on the alert along the entire length of the line of control. But then these things which are which have been planned by Pakistanis, you know, Sometimes they are unavoidable. If this link patrol was going, now we do not know as yet whether it was ahead of the fence or behind the fence. If it is behind the fence, it is far more serious. How did they manage to breach or come across? If it is ahead of the fence like it was in the inner sector, then these things do happen. But what I said right in the beginning, Maha, that we need to be proactive. 
we need to pay pakistanis back in the same coin and we need to forget about diplomatic niceties they can go on a long side doesn't make a difference they are going to deny it in any case like they did last time so why should we care about that that is my point shift border violation over here cease fire violation over here and of course uh, india losing five of its jawans how does the matter immediately figure in between india and pakistan how should it be immediately taken up well uh, the, the the fact is first of all uh, in the, there is a hotline that exists between the director general of military operations between uh, uh, of of india and pakistan uh, so there will obviously have been a conversation already between delhi and rawalpindi on this issue uh, uh, fact to uh, the external affairs ministry as as as, as you will be in a better position to tell our viewers Uh, will obviously have already taken very serious note of this particular issue and they will be taking it up at their level as well so i and and i'm pretty sure that in the next hour or so we'll be able to get an official government reaction on this uh, but remember that this all comes you know in the middle of uh, you know a, a, a sort of very artificial bonomy that has you know sort of been uh, uh, sort of conjured by this government you've seen nawaz sharif extend a hand of peace uh, you know like general kadian was just pointing out uh, and india has been, you know shown a great deal of alacrity the indian government has shown alacrity in trying to reach out and take that hand of friendship uh, you know without actually setting the setting Uh, you're setting the foundation, uh, you know, for any such potential friendship. The fact is, on the ground, away from the diplomats, away from the external affairs ministry, uh, and you know, and and other agencies, you know, trying to sort of drum up this, uh, this sort of atmosphere of friendliness between both the countries. Uh, there are demands dying on the ground. There is violence happening on the line of control. So immediately, uh, you know, technically speaking, the director generals of military operations would already have spoken at this time. Uh, we'll have we'll expect confirmation from the army on what the next step is to be. But we do understand that, uh, you know, our area patrols are still there in that particular area. Obviously, they can't leave that place unguarded. But the units of the ambush has been, uh, you know, has, has been taken out at this time. Obviously. this with another the vigil is not down the guard is not down because operations must continue the show must go on this is definitely going to become a big diplomatic issue i have to remember this bit of what happened in february lieutenant general raj kadian is the pakistan government not serious at all about improving the situation between the two countries or is the pakistan army an entity in itself that the nawaz sharif government will find extremely difficult to discipline Uh, I think it may not be right to conclude that the Pakistani government is not serious. I am sure Nawaz Sharif is sincere, he is serious, but I think he is helpless. He was helpless in 1999 when as PM he was totally sidelined. The then army chief, Pervez Musharraf, planned an operation without even keeping Nawaz Sharif in the picture. I don't think the situation has very much changed. As far as the army as an institution is concerned, they are acting on their own. they have with the government has no control over it and for them it has become a battle of survival that if the army wants to keep its image up in pakistan and still wants to give an impression that it should be counted then keeping the tension alive on the indian side is the only answer this kind of attacks are going to happen they will further increase after the western forces pull out of afghanistan next year because more militant would be available <coughs> we we have to guard against it our offensive of course must be on all three front fronts that is military diplomatic as well as political and i am sure the government is going to react on all these three fronts but you know we have a habit of these say people to people contact must be increased that's a very fine thing to exchange updates and cultural programs but the people here they don't matter as far as the army is concerned i mean never listen to the people nor have a voice they may have started having a voice in the political arena but they have no voice as per the union armed forces there are concerned so those contacts will be fine but that should not be the deciding factor if you have to extend a hand of friendship that that hand has to be strong you cannot extend a hand out of weakness and then hope that the other side will reciprocate Well, absolutely. That's a very important point over there, there Lieutenant General uh, Raj Adhyan Shiv. Let me come back to you. Uh, you were pointing out that this uh, area is uh, where the trade between India and POK goes on. What are the immediate fallouts, perhaps, of this uh, audacious attack? 
Uh, well, remember, Maha, that uh, you know, fire violations uh, have happened uh, the last few occasions this year and before that as well. Uh, when you know, uh, when firing has happened across the uh, LOC, the Indian Army has usually uh, retaliated. It, it, what they call a controlled response, this is sort of calibrated retaliation uh, with small arm fire or similar weapons. Uh, you know, just to make sure that things don't spiral out of control. Uh, and uh, in these uh, violations as well, casualties have have been reported. Uh, on both sides. Now, the the the, the dynamic changes completely uh, in today's in today's incident because uh, this was not just a ceasefire violation in terms of you know cross border firing. It was an actual violation of the line of control itself in terms of uh, you know men with their weapons crossing the line of control and directly ambushing the party. Like uh, you know, like General Karim was saying. So this was obviously an, uh, an air domination patrol uh, that was uh, cited. It was uh, specifically identified, perhaps, uh, and uh, it was targeted. So the, the simple fact is that the fallout of this is uh, going to be largely diplomatic because on the ground there's very little that the army can actually do uh, in terms of uh, any retaliatory action without, uh, you know, sort of without consent from the government itself. Uh, and remember, Pakistan in the past has accused the Indian Army erroneously, uh, you know, of stopping uh, cross trans LOC operations, uh, which have never been true. The Indian Army has, uh, you know, uh, several questions have been put to the Indian Army about this. Uh, there were questions about it in February as well, when the Indian Army was accused of crossing the LOC in Poon and, uh, you know, killing a Pakistan Army Jawan. But that was found to be completely false and a fabricated allegation by the Pakistan Army. Uh, but uh, obviously, the immediate fallout is going to be a great deal of tension and even more up vigilance on the line of control. Uh, but the fact is, like I said, even at a normal time, the level of vigilance of the line of control is so high all the time that uh, you know it, it, it's a little it's a little absurd to imagine you know, increasing the vigil even more because that's how high it is anyway. Mm. Especially at a time like this, this is the season of infiltration, this is the highway of infiltration. Uh, you know, Pakistan, you know, tactics as far as uh, you know uh, crossing the LOC, ceasefire violations every week has increased to such All an right. extent. Uh, Shiv, let me hold you there for a bit. Uh, Rajiv Shukla is reacting to this uh, present situation. Let's listen in to what uh, MOS Parliamentary Affairs is saying. Well, yes, I think it's a very unfortunate incident and uh, I think Honorable Defence Minister and his seat of the matter, so he definitely act according to the provisions. और बीहेडिंग में तो कोई कंफर्मेशन अभी है नहीं हम लोगों को पता नहीं है है ना इसलिए उसकी चीज को आप बिना जाने तूल देने की कोशिश ना करें लेकिन ये कि रक्षा मंत्री जिस मामले में निश्चित रूप से जो उचित कार्रवाई होगी जरूर करेंगे